Ghana's economy has made a remarkable comeback, expanding at its fastest rate in five years during the second quarter of 2024. This impressive growth, recorded at 6.9%, surpasses analyst expectations and marks a significant improvement from the 4.7% growth seen in the previous quarter. According to the government statistician, Kobina Anim, the surge is largely attributed to robust expansion in the extractive sector, reminiscent of the growth patterns observed in 2019. Hasha Derrick, economist, research and policy analyst, joins me for this. Thank you for joining me today, Hashe. Thanks for the opportunity. All right, I'm going to ask you this one more time. What do you make of the GDP figure at 6.9%? Did it surpass your expectations also? Of course, it, is, uh, it, it was uh, it's, it more or less was uh, above my expectation, and, but equally, that was a good news for all Ghanaians. It was a good news for the international community and then for investors who are more concerned about the welfare of Ghanaians. And so, on the general level, that was a good thing. We are now out of the COVID era. We are out of the woes of the 2022 economic hardship, and then we are seeing an economic expansion. And so, for all Ghanaians and well-meaning people, this is a good news for all Ghanaians too. And not to celebrate fully, but it's a good education for better things to come. You can say that again, but talk to me. Are, okay. Are there factors or indicators that point to this expansion in the real economy? I mean, beyond just the numbers saying 6.9%, can we see it? Is it real? Uh, to a larger extent, we might say it is quite good, but it's quite real, uh, not too significant because uh, there is still a high level of unemployment. So if you have a GDP that is being uh, increased without employment uh, employment generation, then that, that is quite an issue. But if you look at the indicators that are contributing or that are driving this economic growth right now, you see that it's coming from industry. And industry is because we are seeing a stabilized uh, uh, exchange rate, we have seen a, st a reduced inflation rate, and we have seen a reduction in interest rates. And so for businesses, it's quite easy for them to also borrow and expand their business. On the other side, we've seen an improvement from agricultural side. That is also an employment generation avenue. And so on a general level, that is quite good. Just that there are certain factors that people also believe that it's contributing to the growth, basically because we are in, a, we are in an election year. And so if you see, you realize that household expenditure has increased and basically because of government expenditure in an election year. Right. Now, the 6.9% growth rate is actually the highest since the second quarter of 2019, and it was driven largely by strong expansion in the extractive sector, you know, just as we saw in the second quarter of 2019. Tell us more about this. I mean, talking about the extractive sector. Right. So the extractive sector, basically because, you know, prices of it are being determined on the international market, and we've seen that, on the extractive side, whether it is gold, whether it is quarrying and stuff, you see that the price of it have gone up on the international market, and that is dollar denominated. And so these are the ones that have contributed to it. Another thing that gives us a lot of uh, good income or contributes to economic growth that Ghanaians are worried about now is the reduction in cocoa production. You know, cocoa production for Ghana is among the highest in the world, and that is another premium quality from Ghana. But we've seen it being uh, set back because of uh, weather patterns and then the current generation uh, trend which got to do with illegal mining. And so there are some uh, lands or some uh, cocoa farms that have been converted into an uh, illegal site for gold mining. And so you see that the gold production has increased astronomically, but when it comes to the cocoa production, that is quite low. And that raises an issue when it comes to sustainability. You know, talking about cocoa, I was coming there because uh, despite the contraction we saw in the cocoa subsector, the agricultural sector sort of registered a very good uh, performance. What factors do you think contributed to the resilience we're seeing in the agricultural sector, you know, beyond cocoa? All right, so for the agricultural sector, uh, this can be due to government policy, and it's a government policy called the Planting for Food and Jobs, and that is another good policy where farmers are assisted and then uh, assisted with irrigation facilities, uh, not across board, but certain uh, other sectors. It is quite good. And uh, we are only hoping that this bad weather that we've come to hit and uh, that has come to hit us now will not prolong for long. There will be uh, the, we have the planting for food and jobs phase two, which is going to be an expansion, which is going to be led by irrigation facilities, which will ensure all year round production. And so this is basically what is driving the agricultural growth aside the cocoa uh, uh, contraction. 
Right, let's bring Coco back into the mix now. I know the country faced challenges or still faces challenges because you already talked about it in that subsector. But how well do you think this is being addressed? I mean, the challenges in the Coco subsector, how well are they being addressed? And so currently there is a national ban that Ghanaians are calling for a state of emergency when it comes to those who are mining in uh, forest reserves those who are also mining close to water bodies and the others. And then there's also another scheme that is to support uh, cocoa farmers with uh, credit facilities. Those trees that are beyond a certain age of, of, of planting are going to be replaced with new variety of seedlings that can uh, withstand pests and other diseases that are high growth yielding uh, varieties. So, so this, basically, this is what the government is doing. But the major factor hitting it aside the weather patterns, it's uh, the mining, or conversion of uh, cocoa farms into mining sites. That the government is currently uh, proposing a ban on it. And so national security and then other world meaning Ghanaians and CSOs are also calling for a halt when it comes to a conversion of cocoa farms into mining areas, and especially those who are mining the forest reserves and those closer to the water bodies. Right, but recently the government increased the producer price of cocoa by 45%. And my guess is that we should set the impact by maybe Q3 figures, or do you feel otherwise about it? I mean, what's the impact you, you envisage from this particular move from government? Uh, on, the, on the nominal side, you see it to be an increase, or you can see it as an increment when it comes to the producer price of it. But when it comes to the farmer share, that is quite on the low, because if you compare a period like, say, 2016, the farmer share when it comes to the producer price was around 70 percent uh, at the current level or for the past four five years you have you've seen that on the nominal level the current share has gone up uh, but when it comes to the percentage side of it it is less than 40 percent and so the government takes almost 60 percent and less than 40 percent goes to the farmer then the farmer is not a uh, uh, is not uh, let me say motivated enough, and that is why most of the farmers are converting their cocoa farms into uh, the illegal mining sites. So, because if somebody comes to you, gives you a good offer where you can get uh, good or uh, where your land is uh, a good harvest for gold, then def definitely you are going to convert that cocoa site into uh, an illegal mining site, and that is why it's what is affecting our cocoa production. Over the past four years, cocoa production has been on a decline, and we've not been able to even access cocoa credit facility this year because on the international market, we were not able to propose any better returns. So let me say, our books were not that lucrative enough. I was just wondering, you were talking about how that, you know, miners could come to farmers and tell, give them good money and, you know, in return they get the land. I'm just wondering if that is how, you know, it sort of works in Ghana. Isn't there maybe an agency that's in charge of all of that? Can individuals just wake up in the morning and then get into farmlands and then start, you know, mining? And so basically the farmland belongs to individual owners. And so uh, assuming I have a cocoa farm, and uh, a miner comes to me. Definitely, it's up to me whether I'll give out my land or I'll not give out my land. But you see, some of these lands are closer to water reserves or water bodies and co. And that is what will also lead to the pollution of the water. So when you go and pollute the water, land, uh, water, that is where the government will have an issue with you. But on the individual level, where the land belongs to me, where I'm not seeing much returns when it comes to cocoa production, definitely the owners lies on me whether I'll be more motivated to give out my land for, uh, uh, let me say, uh, gold mining or not. But uh, when that becomes lucrative or when the offer from the miner becomes lucrative, the farmer sees no importance of investing into that cocoa production again and will look for the short-term benefit without looking at sustainability. Well, there's a lot to say, but I'll just stop here. Uh, given the decline in inflation, uh, what are your expectations for the central bank's uh, monetary policy stance? Are you seeing a rate cut or what do you see in the upcoming meeting? All right. So for, for the past months, we've seen a, a continued decline when it comes to inflation. That is good. It means that the policies implemented by the central bank is all equally good. And so definitely, I expect them to enhance on that. Uh, the exchange rate has also seen a stabilized decline or we've seen a reduction in, re, uh, uh, in the declining rate of it. So uh, that declining rate that is, is on a low, we expect it to translate into business. And that is why if you check, the industrial sector was the one that led the growth of 6.9 because businesses are able to plan very well. They're able to manage their finances and their books and they, they know what to be expected going forward. And so I expect the inflation rate to go further. And then for December, 
I expect it to go uh, a bit low, but you know, there's a cyclical thing when it comes to December. December, December is also another spending uh, month or it's another festive season. And so we, we want to just see how that was to span out, especially when you have an election to run uh, in December. Government expenditure is going to go high because the government will also want to be retained while the opposition was also want to come over or let me say take the reins of the government of the, uh, the, of the country. And so there are a lot of factors that will determine Has it implemented by the bank will materialize. Right. Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. We definitely cannot, you know, divorce politics and the election from some of these economic issues. Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts on the show today. Thank you too.